Hi, I'm Will Potter. I'm a journalist, author, and senior fellow in the Center for Academic Innovation at the University of Michigan, where I help both students and faculty become better storytellers. In this video, I'll be discussing the importance of editing in the storytelling process. And be sure to check out the rest of this series, It's All Storytelling, to help you apply the techniques of powerful narratives in any discipline. Finally, last and the most important thing I'm going to leave you all with that is somehow left, you know, there's all kinds of, storytelling has a little bit of a buzz right now, and there's all kinds of resources online and whatever in different university settings. It's amazing to me that almost all of them leave off editing, right? That's where the work actually happens. Um, I hate to break it to you all, but there is no kind of, uh, you're not just born as a natural storyteller that you can just, that first draft, it sings, and you just file it and send it to the New York Times or to your university press or whatever. That's not how it works. You know, you have to sit down after you've collected all this material and again, demonstrate that mastery of your material through curation and not through volume, right? Your real challenge is to eliminate the distractions. Because I hate to tell it, but some of you already know this. Nobody reads your dissertations. <laughs> Nobody. And even thinking about, you know, people in your field. I have a stack of publications at home from professional news organizations and associations that I haven't been able to get to. You can't take it for granted that just because someone is in your discipline or in your workspace even, that you have their attention. You have to earn that. And you earn that through editing. Now there's this beautiful line from St. X where he says, it seems that perfection is attained not when there is something more to add, nothing more to add, but when there is nothing more to remove. I've always heard it in a much more crass way in newsrooms of, from my editors as, you have to be willing to kill your darlings. This is a terrible phrase. I don't know why as journalists are being labeled enemy of the people and all these other things, we still have phrases like this in our newsrooms. It's not a good idea, right? Um, but what it means is your darlings are those either moments of a film, uh, a turn of phrase, a little bit of research that you're just so proud of as a storyteller, that you just love and you want to see in the final product. But you have to have that restraint and that humility to know it doesn't always get to make it. And sometimes you have to cut that stuff in order to make the narrative as a whole stronger and more compelling. If you're gonna pitch a book idea, a nonfiction book, the first thing you're gonna be asked by any agent or any editor or any publisher is why is this a book and not a magazine article? And what they're trying to do is figure out, well, why does this deserve all the extra money and time and space and everything else that goes into this staff when you could write a magazine piece or a shorter form content and have more influence faster? And you gotta be willing to answer that question. And if you don't, then I think that's kind of a back to the drawing board moment, right? You need to think about your story and what it is you're trying to tell. And then you just wash, rinse, repeat, and do the whole thing over again, over and over and over and over again, until you arrive at a final narrative. Sometimes that's shaped not so much by you deciding, oh, this is perfect. This is ready to go. I'm more proud of this piece than I've ever done. A lot of times it comes from time and deadlines and other things that are pulling us in different directions. But if I'm gonna leave you with one takeaway today to kind of dispel, uh, excuse me, to dispel the mythology that's built up sometimes around storytelling, it's not magic and it's not muses. And I despise, it drives me crazy when I hear writers talking about they have to wait for inspiration to strike or they haven't been visited by the muse. That's amateur hour. Okay, that is, we don't have the luxury of doing that if you're telling stories professionally, either as a journalist or in any other setting. You have to put your butt in the seat and keep it there until you push through. You don't wait for inspiration to come, you have to make it. And if you're having a hard time making it, and I had plenty of those as I'm updating this presentation for you all, you just gotta glue yourself in the chair. Maybe go for a walk, but come back. The most important thing is to keep doing the work, right? And so. I know this is kind of a crash course in a lot of different elements of storytelling. There's many more that I left out or that we could talk about. What I want to emphasize to you all is that you just have to start doing these things. You know, you're not going to be able to incorporate all of these elements in every type of narrative that you do. It just doesn't work that way. But the more you think in this way, you can then start incorporating components of it. 
And over time, it just gets easier and faster and more intuitive. Ultimately, if you're able to incorporate some of these techniques, and let's say you're in computer sciences and the hard sciences in particular, engineering, um, business, really any workplace setting, and you're able to tell a powerful narrative and communicate clearly and speak like a human being, it's amazing how far those elements will get you, right? It's unfortunate, but that really will set you apart in many settings today. So it's worth the time, it's worth the effort, and it's worth keeping the butt in the chair until you start learning some of this.